hey, we feel kind of bad for you guys right now, <laughs> is what Jaren just said, because it's gonna be a little bit hard to hear this. Uh, we are in a little restaurant in Boise, um, but Ricky and I are meeting with Jaren, who, if you haven't seen his interview on the Income School YouTube channel, uh, he was the very first person to finish Project 24 and get up to a full-time income. Uh, and now he's doing really awesome things online. So we kind of want to just talk about some of the things we've been talking uh, about here uh, that can help you to get to that level. Jaron, I'd kind of pass it to you. Sure. So um, what have you been up to? Yeah, so the sites are doing doing really well. Um, I'm, I'm quite a bit past a full-time income now, uh, which is exciting. Um, so I started my site, if, you, if you've watched the interview, I started my site in November of 2017. So it's been just over a year. Um, in that time, I wrote just over 200 articles on three sites. <laughs> 200 articles in a year. That's what, that's when, when we're just leaving here, I said that that's what I need you to say is because you need to know that that's possible. Uh, and you're, it's not like you're spending all your time on this. You got a full-time job. This is a part-time thing still, even though it's earning more than a full-time income. Um, and still 200 articles. Yeah, yeah. I have a full-time job and a kid. Um, most of my articles are written um, at night after my wife goes to bed. I just stay up an extra hour and I write. Or sometimes in the evenings when we're watching TV, I just, if I'm doing keyword research or I'm writing an article that I can do while kind of semi-distracted. Um, one of the things that Jim and Ricky and I were talking about a lot um, is just the importance of keyword research and how, how much I feel like people are missing um, not quite doing that right. They're like close, but there are so many keywords out there. I, I just started a new site and I, in what I think is a fairly competitive niche, and I think most people would agree, but there's just so many small keywords, simple questions that people are asking um, that I found only just doing Google autocomplete and then like kind of going down the rabbit hole until I find something that like, wait, that didn't answer my question. You know, like I asked a simple question and no one answered it, you know, and it's obvious that there's no competition there because no one's helping that searcher. Um, and then I just write that article or I write it down. Um, I, I think keyword research is just such an important part of Project 24 and making these sites successful. I, don't, I think people don't spend enough time on it. Um, even though really quality content is super important, I think that you could write the best article ever on a really poorly chosen keyword and never get any traffic from it. And so I, tell us what you mean by a poorly chosen keyword. What is, like you're, you're in the forum all the time and stuff. Yeah. What, are, what are some of the specific things that people frequently miss? Uh, I, I don't like product reviews. I think they're hard to rank for. And even if you rank for them, they get really bad traffic. I think people are sometimes too generic uh, with their keyword. Um, they feel obligated to write a keyword because they feel like it's important for their for their niche or for their website. So they feel obligated to write it when it's, it's not worth writing. Um, and I think that people don't evaluate competition well. Um, I think people writing about something too competitive. Y yeah, they just they find a keyword that's decent, but a very large authoritative website or multiple answered that question extremely well. They have already satisfied the need. Um, of searchers of that question, um, I just never write those articles. I, I just only write an article if I feel like no one's helping the searcher or they're doing a really bad job helping the searcher. It's really short, it's like a forum post. Um, man, I feel like almost no matter what the niche is, if you do a pretty good job sorting through and like bouncing through keywords, you can always find something that's really... Are you finding those super hard to find? I mean, is th this is what we hear all the time is, uh, well, there's nothing in my niche. There's nothing that uh, that nobody's written. So in your experience, you've written over 200 articles in the last year. Is it hard for you to find these, these topics that nobody's answered the question? Or do you find that you kind of go down a rabbit hole and then find like a nugget of like 10 different topics you could write about? How does that, what does that look like for you when you do keyword research? Uh, um... I don't feel like it's hard to find a keyword <laughs> worth writing. Um, I mean, sometimes it misses the mark. I, sometimes I feel like it's a really good keyword and it's worth writing and I write it and it doesn't get a lot of traffic. Uh, but that's that's the exception, I think. Uh, I think if you just spend a few minutes, like almost all my keyword research is just like the wife and I are just like watching TV and I just have my laptop open and I'm just like kind of going through and, and then I'll like see a word that like in my niche that like, oh, I, then I like start and it feels exciting because I'll start a kind of a new search starting with just that base word and then going through the autocompletes and then suddenly like a whole new realm of keywords opens up 
um, that are all worth writing. Um, I think almost no matter what the niche is, there's small questions that are unanswered. I think if the niche feels saturated, that's because it's a big niche and there's a lot of people searching for it, which means there's a lot of fringe or long tail questions um, that are worth writing. Um, I think if it's a really small niche, then there's probably a lot of bigger keywords that you can write and rank for. And if it's a really big competitive one, there's a lot of stuff on the edges that the bigger sites, it's not worth them writing and you can write. What percentage of your posts are response versus staple versus pillar? And the reason that I ask that is we always recommend a pretty even blend at the beginning, but as your site gets bigger, that's rarely going to be the case. Yeah. It's going to be a perfect blend. Yeah. I would actually say uh, early on I tried to, I was intentional about trying to keep that mix fairly even. Mm -hmm. Which I, is good. That's yeah, good. I, I feel like as the sites, as I've got used up more of the keywords, I I find myself doing the, going to the extremes. I, I, most of my articles now are response posts or pillar posts. Mm -hmm. If it's something that like I really want, I really want that keyword, I just write a, a five, 6,000 word post that's really good. Mm -hmm. um, and early on, I just hated writing those posts, but now I, I get a weird amount of satisfaction out of it. That is weird. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, because once you write like a really help, like huge help article, I don't know, it feels good. I feel like I don't write that many in the middle articles. I'm, write, I'm answering a really simple question that doesn't need more than 1,500 or 2,000 words. Um, or um, it's like a topic that needs to be a pillar post because it needs a lot of headlines to, to really help that person. Because I feel like a lot of those pillar posts, I'm like educating them on something, not just answering a question, you know? Yeah, right. um, so I've written plenty of staple posts, but I feel like these days it's a lot of response posts and pillar posts. Okay, how about monetization? What have, uh, what have you learned? What, what, what have been some of the lessons you've had to learn about monetization? Yeah, so I only added ads fairly recently, maybe four months ago, three, four months ago. Have done really well for me. Have been absolutely worth it. What's your RPM? About 21, 22 right now. That's good. Um, it was a little bit lower. I think around 16, 17. This is page view RPM, not sessions. Um, but it always goes up in the retail season. Um, that was worth it. I was worried, as you guys maybe were too, early on when I added ads, that I was going to see some kind of like lash back from that. Like people were going to be upset, or I was going to lose traffic, or the site was going to slow down and that was going to cause... Your info me. products don't convert as well. Yeah. I felt like I saw nothing. I mean, the site the site just continued its upward trajectory. So even if I even if that was the case, it was it was just gobbled up by the upward trajectory. Yeah, that's how I felt. I was certain, certain my info product sales were just going to tank yeah. as soon as I had ads on there and nothing happened. It was just fine. Yeah. Yeah, and a, and a huge part of my income from the site is uh, affiliate products, um, and I didn't see any decrease from that. I've only seen, um, that's done really well for me, but I'm, I, I, in a smart way, but I push my affiliate products quite a bit. A lot of my posts have affiliate links, just text links, I don't do any buttons or any other weird stuff, um, but I'm pretty good about that. Um, so affiliate products have been about 70, 80% of the income from the site, and about 20 to 25% has been um, ads. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. I, th I think as the site grows, the ads are going to take over a little bit more and because I think I've already kind of saturated how much I can push the affiliate products. Yeah. But every art new article that ranks adds incrementally more ad income. Yeah. I think as the site gets bigger, that, that will shift a little bit. Um, especially because when I first started the site and early on, I was really heavy about Amazon and stuff because that was just kind of the message back in the day. Yeah. Um, but... Cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, congratulations, first of all. Uh, you are absolutely killing it. Um, and we mostly just wanted to leave this for you as a bit of inspiration um, from Cup Bop and <laughs> Meridian, Idaho. Uh, just inspiration for like, you know, he's got a full-time job and he did 211 articles and it worked. Like it's it's he's giving him more than than uh, than what you could expect to to achieve. Uh, it's just awesome what you can do, but you know you, you've really you got to do the work if you want to reap it. So thanks for being here and uh, keep killing it.